second aranyaka fourth fifth sixth and seventh adhyayas of aitreya aranyaka upanishad this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti tarvanat adoration to the highest self hari om verily in the beginning all this was self one only there was nothing else blinking whatsoever he thought shall i send forth worlds he sent forth these worlds ambhas water marichi light mara mortal and up water that ambas water is above the heaven and it is heaven the support the marichis the lights or the sky the mara mortal is the earth and the waters under the earth are the ap world he thought there are these worlds shall i send forth guardians of the worlds he then formed the purusha the person taking him forth from the water he brooded on him and when that person had thus been brooded on a mouth burst forth like an egg from the mouth proceeded speech from speech agni fire nostrils burst forth from the nostrils proceeded scent prana from scent vayu air eyes burst forth from the eyes proceeded sight from sight aditya sun ears burst forth from the ears proceeded hearing from hearing the dis quarters of the world skin burst forth from the skin proceeded hairs sense of touch from the hairs shrubs and trees the heart burst forth from the heart proceeded mind from mind chandramas moon the navel burst forth from the navel proceeded the apana the down breathing from apana death the generative organ burst forth from the organ proceeded seed from seed water second kanda those deities devata agni and the rest after they had been sent forth fell into this great ocean then he the self besieged him the person with hunger and thirst the deities then tormented by hunger and thirst spoke to him the self allow us a place in which we may rest and eat food he led a cow towards them the deities they said this is not enough he led a horse towards them they said this is not enough he led man towards them then they said well done indeed therefore man is well done 
he said to them enter each according to his place then agni fire having become speech entered the mouth vayu air having become scent entered the nostrils aditya sun having become sight entered the eyes the dis regions having become hearing entered the ears the shrubs and trees having become hairs entered the skin chandramas the moon having become mind entered the heart death having become down breathing entered the navel the waters having become seed entered the generative organ then hunger and thirst spoke to him the self allow us to a place he said to them i assign you to those very deities there i make you co-partners with them therefore to whatever deity an oblation is offered hunger and thirst or co-partners in it third kanda he thought there are these worlds and the guardians of the worlds let me send forth food for them he brooded over the water from the water thus brooded on matter murti was born and that matter which was born that verily was food when this food the object matter had thus been sent forth it wished to flee crying and turning away he the subject tried to grasp it by speech he could not grasp it by speech if he had grasped it by speech man would be satisfied by naming food he tried to grasp it by scent breath he could not grasp it by scent if he had grasped it by scent man would be satisfied by smelling food he tried to grasp it by the eye he could not grasp it by the eye if he had grasped it by the eye man would be satisfied by seeing food he tried to grasp it by the ear he could not grasp it by the ear if he had grasped it by the ear man would be satisfied by hearing food he tried to grasp it by the skin he could not grasp it by the skin if he had grasped it by the skin man would be satisfied by touching food he tried to grasp it by the mind he could not grasp it by the mind if he had grasped it by the mind man would be satisfied by thinking food he tried to grasp it by the generative organ he could not grasp it by the organ if he had grasped it by the organ man would be satisfied by sending forth food he tried to grasp it by the down breathing the breath which helps to swallow food through the mouth and to carry it off through the rectum the pavindriya he got it thus it is vayu the getter who lays hold of food and the vayu is verily annayu he who gives life or who lives by food 
he thought how can all this be without me and then he thought by what way shall i get there and then he thought if speech names if scent smells if the eye sees if the ear hears if the skin feels if the mind thinks if the off breathing digests if the organ sends forth then what am i then opening the suture of the skull he got in by that door that door is called the vidriti tearing ascender the nandana the place of bliss there are three dwelling places for him three dreams this dwelling place the eye this dwelling place the throat this dwelling place the heart when born when the highest self had entered the body he looked through all things in order to see whether anything wished to proclaim here another self he saw this person only himself as the widely spread brahman i saw it thus he said therefore he was idamdra seeing this being idamdra by name they call him indra mysteriously for the devas love mystery yeah they love mystery first adhyaya first kanda let the woman who are with child move away verily from the beginning he the self is in man as a germ which is called seed this seed which is strength gathered from all the limbs of the body he the man bears as self in his self body when he commits the seed to the woman then he the father causes it to be born that is the first birth that seed becomes the self of the woman as if one of her own limbs therefore it does not injure her she nourishes his her husband's self the son within her she who nourishes is to be nourished the woman bears the germ he the father elevates the child even before the birth and immediately after when he thus elevates the child both before and after his birth he really elevates his own self for the continuation of these worlds men for thus are these worlds continued this is his second birth he the son bearing his self is then placed in his stead for the performance of all good works but his other self the father having done all he has to do and having reached the full measure of his life departs after departing from hence he is born again that is his third birth and this has been declared by a rishi while dwelling in the womb i discovered all the births of these devas a hundred iron strongholds kept me but i escaped quickly down like a falcon vamadeva lying in the womb has thus declared this and having this knowledge he stepped forth after this dissolution of the body and having obtained all his desires in that heavenly world became immortal yeah he became immortal sixth adhyaya first kanda 
let the women go back to their place who is he whom we meditate on as the self which is the self that by which we see form that by which we hear sound that by which we perceive smells that by which we utter speech that by which we distinguish sweet and not sweet and what comes from the heart and the mind namely perception command understanding knowledge wisdom seeing holding thinking considering readiness or suffering remembering conceiving willing breathing loving desiring no all these are various names only of knowledge the true self and that self consisting of knowledge is brahman it is indra it is prajapati all these devas these five great element earth air ether water fire these and those which are as it were small and mixed and seeds of this kind and that kind born from eggs born from the womb born from heat born from germs horses cows men elephants and whatsoever breeds whether walking or flying and what is immovable all that is led produced by knowledge the self it rests on knowledge the self the world is led produced by knowledge the self knowledge is its cause knowledge is brahman he vamadeva having by this conscious self stepped forth from this world and having obtained all desires in that heavenly world became immortal yeah he became immortal thus it is o seventh adhyaya first kanda my speech rests in the mind my mind rests in speech appear to me thou the highest self you speech and mind are the two pins that hold the wheels of the veda may what i have learnt not forsake me i join day and night with what i have learnt i shall speak of the real i shall speak the true may this protect me may this protect the teacher may it protect me may it protect the teacher yeah the teacher end of second aranyaka fourth fifth sixth and seventh adhyayas recording by jyoti tarawanat third aranyaka first adhyaya first kanda of aitreya aranyaka upanishad this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by jyoti tarawanat next follows the upanishad of the samhita the former half is the earth the latter half the heaven their union the air thus says mandukya their union is the ether thus did makshavya teach it that air is not considered independent therefore i do not agree with his mandukas son the former half is speech the latter half is mind their union breath prana thus says suravira mandukya but his eldest son said 
the former half is mind the latter half speech for we first conceive with the mind indeed and then we utter with speech therefore the former half is indeed mind the latter half speech but the union is really breath verily it is the same with both the father mandukya and the son this meditation as here described joined with mind speech and breath is like a chariot drawn by two horses and one horse between them prashtivahana and he who thus knows this union becomes united with offspring cattle fame glory of countenance and the world of swarga he lives his full age now all this comes from the mandukyas second kanda next comes the meditation as taught by sakalya the first half is the earth the second half heaven there uniting the rain the uniter parjanya and so it is when he parjanya reigns thus strongly without ceasing day and night then they also say in ordinary language heaven and earth have come together so much with regard to the deities now with regard to the body every man is indeed like an egg there are two halves of him thus they say this half is the earth that half heaven and there between them is the ether the space of the mouth like the ether between heaven and earth in this ether there in the mouth the breath is fixed as in that other ether the air is fixed and as there are those three luminaries in heaven there are these three luminaries in man as there is that sun in heaven there is this eye in the head as there is that lightning in the sky there is this heart in the body as there is that fire on earth there is this seed in the member having thus represented the self body as the whole world sakalya said this half is the earth that half heaven he who thus knows this union becomes united with offspring cattle fame glory of countenance and the world of swarga he lives his full age third kanda next comes the reciters of the nirbuja nirbuja abides on earth pratrinna in heaven the ubayamantrena in the sky now if any one should chide him who recites the nirbuja let him answer thou art fallen from the two lower places if any one should chide him who recites the pratrinna let him answer thou art fallen from the two higher places but he who recites the ubayamantrena there is no chiding him for when he turns out the sandhi the union of words that is the form of nirbuja and when he pronounces two syllables pure without modification that is the form of pratrinna this comes first by the udaya mantrana what is between the two both are fulfilled both the sandhi and the pada let him who wishes for proper food say the nirbuja let him who wishes for swarga say the patrinna let him who wishes for both say the ubaya mantrena now if another man an enemy should chide him who says the nirbuja let him say to him thou hast offended the earth the deity the earth the deity will strike thee 
if another man should chide him who says the pratrinna let him say to him thou hast offended heaven the deity heaven the deity will strike thee if another man should chide him who says the ubayamantrena let him say to him thou hast offended the sky the deity the sky the deity will strike thee and whatever the reciter shall say to one who speaks to him or does not speak to him depend upon it it will come to pass but to a brahmana let him not say anything except what is auspicious only he may curse a brahmana in excessive wealth nay not even in excessive wealth should he curse a brahmana but he should say i bow before brahmanas thus says suravira mandukya fourth kanda next follows the imprecations let him know that breath is the beam on which the whole house of the body rests if any one a brahmana or another man should chide him who by meditation has become that breath as beam then if he thinks himself strong he says i grasped the breath the beam well thou dost not prevail against me who have grasped the breath as the beam let him say to him breath the beam will forsake thee but if he thinks himself not strong let him say to him thou couldst not grasp him who wishes to grasp the breath as the beam breath the beam will forsake thee and whatever the reciter shall say to one who speaks to him or does not speak to him depend upon it it will come to pass but to a brahmana let him not say anything except what is auspicious only he may curse a brahmana in excessive wealth nay not even in excessive wealth should he curse a brahmana but he should say i bow before brahmanas thus says suravira mandukya fifth kanda now those who repeat the nirbuja say the former half is the first syllable the latter half the second syllable and the space between the first and second halves is the samhita union he who thus knows this samhita union becomes united with offspring cattle fame glory of countenance and the world of swarga he lives his full age now hrasvamandukya says we reciters of nirbuja say yes the former half is the first syllable and the latter half the second syllable but the samhita is the space between the first and second halves in so far as by it one turns out the union sandhi and knows what is the accent and what is not and distinguishes what is the mora and what is not he who thus knows this samhita union becomes united with offspring cattle fame glory of countenance and the world of swarga he lives his full age now his middle son the child of his mother pratibodhi says one pronounces these two syllables letter by letter without entirely separating them and without entirely uniting them then that mora between the first and second halves which indicates the union that is the saman evenness sliding i therefore hold saman only to be the samhita union this has also been declared by rishi o brahaspati they know nothing higher than saman he who thus knows the samhita union becomes united with offspring cattle fame glory of countenance and the world of swarga he lives his full age sixth kanda 
Tarukshya said, The Samhita union is formed by means of the Brihat and Ratantara Samans. Verily, the Ratantara Saman is speech, the Brihat Saman is breath. By both, by speech and breath, the Samhita is formed. For this Upanishad, for acquiring from his teacher the knowledge of this Samhita of speech and breath, Tarukshya guards his teacher's cows a whole year. For it alone Tarukshya guards the cows a whole year. This has also been declared by a Rishi. Vashishta carried hither the Ratantara. Bharadvaja brought hither the Brihat of Agni. He who thus knows this Samhiti union becomes united with offspring, cattle, fame, glory of countenance, and the world of Swarga. He lives his full age. Kauntaravya said, Speech is united with breath, breath with the blowing air, the blowing air with the Visvadevas, the Visvadevas with the heavenly world, the heavenly world with Brahman. That Samhita is called the gradual Samhita. He who knows this gradual Samhita union becomes united with offspring, cattle, fame, glory of countenance, on the world of Swarga, in exactly the same manner as this Samhita, that is, gradually. If that worshipper, whether for his own sake or for that of another, recites the Samhita, let him know when he is going to recite that this Samhita went up to heaven, and that it will be even so with those who by knowing it become Devas. May it always be so. He who thus knows this Samhita union becomes united with offspring, cattle, fame, glory of countenance, and the world of Swarga. He lives his full age. Panchala Chanda said, The Samhita union composition is speech. Verily, by speech the Vedas, by speech the meters are composed. Friends unite through speech, all beings unite through speech, therefore speech is everything here. With regard to this, view of speech being more than breath, it should be borne in mind that when we thus repeat the Veda or speak, breath is absorbed in speech, speech swallows breath, and when we are silent or sleep, Speech is absorbed in breath. Breath swallows speech. The two swallow each other. Verily, speech is the mother, breath the son. This has been declared also by Arishi. There is one bird as wind. He has entered the sky as breath or living soul. He saw this whole world. With my ripe mind I saw him close to me in the heart. The mother licks or absorbs him, breath, and he absorbs the mother, speech. He who thus knows this Samhita, union, becomes united with offspring, cattle, fame, glory of countenance, and the world of Swarga. He lives his full age. Next follows the Prajapati Samhita. The former half is the wife, the latter half the man the result of the union the son the act of the union the begetting that samhita is aditi indestructible for aditi indestructible is all this whatever there is father mother son and begetting this has also been declared by a rishi aditi is mother is father is son he who thus knows this samhita union becomes united with offspring cattle fame glory of countenance and the world of swarga he lives his full age second adhyaya first kanda stavira sakalya said that breath is the beam and as the other beams rest on the house beam thus the eye the ear the mind the speech the senses the body 
the whole self rests on this breath of that self the breathing is like the sibilants the bones like the mutes the marrow like the vowels and the fourth part flesh blood and the rest like the semi vowels so said harsamandukya to us it was said to be a triad only of that triad namely bones marrow and joints there are 360 parts on this side the right and 360 on that side the left they make 720 together and 720 are the days and nights of the year thus that self which consists of sight hearing meta mind and speech is like unto the days he who thus knows this self which consists of sight hearing meta mind and speech as like unto the days obtains union likeness or nearness with the days has sons and cattle and lives his full age second kanda next comes kuntaravya there are 360 syllables vowels 360 sibilants consonants 360 groups what we call syllables or the days what we call sibilants or the nights what we called groups or the junctions of days and nights so far with regard to the gods the days now with regard to the body the syllables which we explained mythologically or physiologically the bones the sibilants which we explained mythologically or physiologically the marrow marrow is the real breath life for marrow is seed and without breath life seed is not sown or when it is sown without breath life it will decay it will not grow the groups which we explained mythologically or physiologically the joints of that triad namely bones marrows and joints there are 540 parts on this side the right and 540 on that side the left they make 1080 together and 1080 are the rays of the sun they make the brihati verses and the day of the mahavrata thus that self which consists of sight hearing meter mind and speech is like unto the syllables he who knows this self which consists of sight hearing meter mind and speech as like unto syllables obtains union likeness or nearness with the syllables has sons and cattle and lives his full age third kanda bhadwa says there are four persons to be meditated on and worshiped the person of the body the person of the meters the person of the veda and the great person what we call the person of the body is this corporal self its essence is the incorporeal conscious self what we call the person of the meters is this collection of letters the veda its essence is the vowel a what we call the person of the veda is the mind by which we know the vedas the rig veda yajur veda and sama veda its essence is brahman therefore let one choose a brahman priest who is full of brahman the veda and is able to see any flaw in the sacrifice what we call the great person is the ear which causes some beings to fall altogether and causes others to grow up its essence is yonder sun one should know that the incorporeal conscious self and yonder sun are both one and the same therefore the sun appears to every man singly and differently this has also been declared by arishi the bright face of the gods arose the eye of mitra varuna and agni 
it filled heaven and earth and the sky the sun is the self of all that rests and moves this i think to be the regular samhita as conceived by me thus said bhardwa for the bhavrikas consider him the self in the great hymn mahadukta the advaryus in the sacrificial fire the chandogas in the mahavrata ceremony him they see in this earth in heaven in the air in the ether in the water in herbs in trees in the moon in the stars in all beings him alone they call brahman that self which consists of sight hearing meter mind and speech is like unto the ear he who recites to another that self which consists of sight hearing meter mind and speech and is like unto the ear fourth kanda to him the vedas yield no more milk he has no luck in what he has learnt from his guru he does not know the path of virtue this has also been declared by a rishi he who has forsaken the friend the veda that knows his friends in his speech there is no luck though he hears he hears in vain for he does not know the path of virtue here it is clearly said that he has no luck in what he has learnt and that he does not know the path of virtue therefore let no one who knows this lay the sacrificial fire belonging to the mahavrata for another let him not sing the sermons of the mahavrata for another let him not recite the sastras of that day for another however let him willingly do this for a father or for an akraya for that is done really for himself we have said that the incorporeal conscious self and the sun are one when these two become separated the sun is seen as if it were the moon no rays spring from it the sky is red like madder the patient cannot retain the wind his head smells bad like a raven's nest let him know then that his self in the body is gone and that he will not live very long then whatever he thinks he has to do let him do it and let him recite the following hymns yad anti yakadurake ad it pratnasya retasa yatra brahma pavamana udvyam tamasas pari next when the sun is seen pierced and seems like the nave of a cart wheel when he sees his own shadow pierced let him know then that it is so as stated before that is that he is going to die soon next when he sees himself in a mirror or in the water with a crooked head or without a head or when his pupils are seen inverted or not straight let him know then that it is so next let him cover his eyes and watch then threads are seen as if falling together but if he does not see them let him know then that it is so next let him cover his ears and listen and there will be a sound as if a burning fire or of a carriage but if he does not hear it let him know then that it is so next when fire looks blue like the neck of a peacock or when he sees lightning in a cloudless sky or no lightning in a clouded sky or when he sees as it were bright rays in the dark cloud let him know then that it is so next when he sees the ground as if it were burning let him know that it is so these are the visible signs next come the dreams 
if he sees a black man with black teeth and that man kills him or a boar kills him a monkey jumps on him the wind carries him along quickly having swallowed gold he spits it out he eats honey he chews stalks he carries a red lotus he drives with asses and boars wearing a wreath of red flowers nala das he drives a black cow with a black calf facing the south if a man sees any one of these dreams let him fast and cook a pot of milk sacrifice it accompanying each oblation with a verse of the ratri hymn and then after having fed the brahmanas with other food prepared at his house eat himself the rest of the oblation let him know that the person within all beings not heard here not reached not thought not subdued not seen not understood not classed but hearing thinking seeing classing sounding understanding knowing is his self fifth kanda now next the upanishad of the whole speech true all these are upanishads of the whole speech but this they call so chiefly the mute consonants represent the earth the sibilants the sky the vowels heaven the mute consonants represent agni fire the sibilants air the vowels the sun the mute consonants represent the rig veda the sibilants the ajur veda the vowels the sam veda the mute consonants represent the eye the sibilants the ear the vowels the mind the mute consonants represent the up breathing the sibilants the down breathing the vowels the back breathing next comes this divine lute the human body made by the gods the lute made by man is an imitation of it and there is a head of this so there is a head of that lute made by man as there is a stomach of this so there is the cavity in the bowl of that and there is a tongue of this so there is a tongue in that as there are fingers of this so there are strings of that as there are vowels of this so there are tones of that as there are consonants of this so there are touches of that as this is endowed with sound and firmly strung so that is endowed with sound and firmly strung as this is covered with a hairy skin so that is covered with a hairy skin verily in former times they covered a lute with a hairy skin he who knows this lute made by the devas and meditates on it is willingly listened to his glory fills the earth and wherever they speak aryan languages there they know him next follows the verse called vagrasa the essence of speech when a man reciting or speaking in an assembly does not please let him say this verse may the queen of all speech who is covered as it were by the lips surrounded by teeth as if by spears who is a thunderbolt help me to speak well this is the vagrasa the essence of speech next krishna harita confided this brahmana concerning speech to him his people prajapati the ear after having sent forth all creatures burst he put himself together again by means of kandas vedas because he put himself together again by means of kandas therefore the text of the veda is called samhita put together of that samhita the letter n is the strength the letter sh the breath and self atman he who knows the rick verses and the letters n and sh for every samhita 
he knows the samhita with strength and breath let him know that this is the life of the samhita if the pupil asks shall i say it with the letter n or without it let the teacher say with the letter n and if he asks shall i say it with the letter sh or without it let the teacher say with the letter sh raswa mandukya said if we here recite the verses according to the samhita attending to the necessary changes of n and s into n and sh and if we say the adhyaya of mandukya then the letters n and sh strength and breath have by this been obtained for us stavira sakalya said if we recite the verses according to the samhita and if we say the adhyaya of mandukya then the letters n and sh have by this been obtained for us here the rishis the kavashayas knowing this said why should we repeat the veda why should we sacrifice we offer as a sacrifice breath in speech or speech in breath what is the beginning of one that is the end of the other let no one tell these samhitas to one who is not a resident people who has not been with his teacher at least one year and who is not himself to become an instructor thus say the teachers yeah thus say the teachers end of third aranyaka end of aitreya aranyaka upanishad recording by jyoti taravnat